question eight on the January 2020 CSEC RECIT paper. And it says, solve a pair of simultaneous equation. Of course, the instructions here must answer all questions. And this is where section two starts. And it has algebra relation functions and graph. So the first thing I'm going to start by doing is calling the first equation, equation one. And calling the second equation, equation two. Now, one thing to notice is that you have a nonlinear equation and a linear equation. So there is only one method that we can use here, and that is the method of substitution. Now, fortunate for us, both equations are equal to x. So you have y squared plus 2y plus 11 equal x, and x is equal to 5 minus 3y, which means that if both equations are equal to x, the two things must be equal. So that implies that y squared plus 2y plus 11 must be equal to 5 minus 3y. I want to realize that it's an equation that has a power higher than 1. It's a second degree polynomial. In other words, it's a quadratic. We have to take everything to one side. So we're going to end up with y squared plus 2y. The minus 3y would come over as a positive 3y plus 11. You carry over the positive 5 as a minus 5. And this is equal to 0. Now simplifying this would give me y squared plus 5y plus 6 equals 0. So we have it in the form and now we have to factorize this. Now remember we use the AC method. So we have 1 times 6 which is 6. So we need two numbers. When we multiply them we get 6. But when we add them we get our B value which is positive 5. Those two numbers would be 2 and 3. So I'm going to rewrite the 5y as y squared plus 2y plus 3y plus 6 equal 0. Now bear in mind how this works. We pair them off and we factorize them. Now for the first two, which is y squared and 2y, we can factor out a y. So I'm going to have factor out a y. I'm going to have y plus 2. And for the second pair, we can factor out a 3. We're going to have y plus 2. And this is equal to 0. Once you realize that both brackets are equal, it's a very high possibility that you're on the right track. So you have y plus 3 times y plus 2 equals 0. Now the concept here is that if two things multiply to give you 0, one of them must be 0. So it's either y plus 3 equals 0 or y plus 2 equals 0, which would imply that y is equal to minus 3 or y equal minus 2. But this is only the solution for y. What about x? Recall that x is equal to 5 minus 3y as the simplest equation. So when x equal minus 3, I mean when y equal minus 3, so when y equal minus 3, x is equal to 5 minus 3 times minus 3. And of course you can put all this inside of your calculator. This is just going to give us 14. And when y equal minus 2, x would be equal to 5 minus 3 times minus 2. x would be equal to, that's going to give me 5 plus 6. That is going to be 11. So what is my solution? My solution, I can write it as an ordered pair now, would be 14 with minus 3 and 11 with minus 2. And of course, you can take these values and you can test them inside of the equation. They should work. If they don't work, you know you're in trouble. We now move on to part B. And it says the function f is defined as follows. f of x is equal to 4x squared minus 8x minus 2. Express f of x in the form a into x plus h all squared plus k, where a, h, and k are constant. Of course, we know in order to do this, we actually have to complete the square. Now, there's a shortcut method. To complete in the square. So we can label a, we know that a is 4, b is minus 8, and c is minus 2. Now the shortcut says that h is equal to b over 2a. So a should be equal to b, which is minus 8 over 2a. So it's 2, and remember that a is 4. So we can say that a should be equal to negative 8 over 8, which is negative 1. Now k is equal to c minus a8 squared. 
So k is equal to c. Now my c value is minus 2 minus my a value, which is 4 times 8 squared. So we have negative 1 squared. Now, of course, you can put all this inside of your calculator. So you have k would be equal to negative 2 minus 4 times negative 1 squared, which would be minus 6. So therefore, in the form f of x would be equal to a. And of course, we know that a is 4 into x plus h. Well, of course, h is minus 1. So we're not going to put x plus minus 1. We're just going to be putting x minus 1 all squared plus k. And k in this case is minus 6. So once again, we're not, we don't have to put plus minus 6. We can simply just put minus 6. So that is it. Now, part 2 says state the minimum value of f of x. And we know it has a minimum value because the a value is positive. Now my minimum value is my k value and my k value is minus 6. So this is just minus 6. Determine the equation of the axis of symmetry. Now, all we have to do, now the equation for this is just x equal minus h. But what we simply do is that we go inside of the bracket where we have the x minus 1 all squared. And we equate that to 0. Because it is when this bracket is equal to 0 that the minimum value would be produced. So we have x minus 1 equals 0. Which implies that x equals 1. This is what we call the equation of the axis of symmetry. Right? If you draw the line x equal 1, it would cut the quadratic exactly into half. We now move on to question C. And it says the speed time graph below, not drawn to scale, shows a three-stage journey of a car over a period of 40 seconds. So we have stage 1. On my y-axis, it's important to note that we have the speed and on the x-axis, we have the time. Now, we have stage 1, we have stage 2, and we have stage 3. It says determine the acceleration of the car for each of the following stages of the journey. Now, bear in mind what acceleration is. Acceleration is a rate of change of velocity. Now, speed and velocity are quite similar, with the exception that velocity has magnitude and direction, which makes it a vector quantity. Speed, on the other hand, is only a scalar quantity, only has magnitude. Now, if we look at stage 2, which is the flat stage here, it starts at 16 seconds and it ends at 32 seconds. Now, notice the velocity or the speed over this period. It is 12 seconds at 16, 12 meters per second at 16, and it is also 12 meters per second after 32 seconds, which means that there is no increase and there is no decrease. The speed is constant for this time, which means that there is no acceleration because acceleration is a rate of change of velocity, and if velocity doesn't change, there can be no acceleration. So my acceleration here would be 0 meters per second squared. What about stage 3? All right, at stage 3, we can see that the initial speed is 12 meters per second. Then it moves down to 0, and we're looking at the y-axis now to get the speed. Time is on the x-axis, of course, and it is from 32 seconds to 40 seconds. Now, this is more what we call deceleration, which means that the acceleration will be negative. Now, how does acceleration work? We can create a formula that says acceleration is equal to the final velocity, so v sub f minus initial velocity, v sub i over the time taken for this period. In this case, my acceleration will be equal to my final velocity. It is what it comes to at the 40 seconds, which is 0. So it will be 0 minus, up here we have, it's coming from 12 meters per second. And the time here, would be from 40, well, from 32 to 40. So we can say 40 minus 32, which is going to give me minus 12 meters per second over 40 minus 32 is 8 seconds. And of course, when I divide this, I'm going to get negative 1.5 meters per second squared. All right. So the fact that this is negative tells me that it is actually decelerating. It is slowing down. All right, and deceleration is negative acceleration. Very important to note here.